Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about UDFs in Spark. I'm going to talk about user defined functions in Spark. So in most of my videos, you would have heard me saying, you know, try to avoid user defined functions in Spark. They are not performant, right? So in today's video, we are going to see what are UDFs? You know, why do we use UDFs and why they are slow in Spark? Right. And also, even if, you know, you have to use uh, user defined functions in few cases, what type of UDFs you can actually prefer, right? Whether you can use PySpark UDF, you can use Scala UDF, you can use Pandas UDF, which one would be the better choice? So we, we are going to see all these details in today's video. But before moving on, do remember to like this particular video, share my channel and do remember to subscribe to the channel as well. So let's move ahead. So why do we need user defined function? You, so you can actually see an example uh, also that I put here where I'm trying to add a function. I'm trying to add 74516 to a particular variable X, right? So this is nothing but it's a user defined function where a user is trying to define the transformation, right? The user is trying to define the transformation and put it together as a function. So it is a reusable component. Right. So I have a Python series also. So in case you are interested in learning Python, go ahead and watch that particular uh, playlist as well. So talking about the UDFs. So whenever Spark has uh, Spark by default has a lot of inbuilt functions. Right. So, for example, Colace is one function. Spark SQL has Colace. Right. So the concatenation. So all these are nothing but the inbuilt function. So you don't need to specifically uh, create your own function for it. So wherever possible, try to use your own functions. Uh, try to use the Spark inbuilt functions and avoid your own custom defined user defined functions. So user defined functions are nothing but these are your custom functions where you try to define your own transformations. Now, why do we need UDFs? So let's say I already told you that Spark has inbuilt functions. So whenever you're trying to develop a kind of transformation, which is not present inbuilt in the Spark, that is when we need UDF. So always try to first check whether you have an inbuilt function in Spark for the work you want to do, for the transformation you want to do. If you don't have, that is when you go ahead and create a user defined function. Right. So whenever the native Spark functions are not sufficient to solve your problem, that is when you will go ahead and create a user defined function. So right now, if you see on the screen over here, what I have, I have a user defined function. I have a Spark function. What it is about? It is about concatenation. Right. So if you look at the Spark function, right, I have a data frame and I'm trying to concatenate first name with literal S. Right. So I'm using over here. I'm just using the concat inbuilt function. But at the top, if you see this UDF function, I'm using the Lambda functions. I'm trying to create my own user defined function, which is uh, which I've created using Lambda function. Uh, right. And then I'm trying to use this particular user defined function in my select statement to concatenate my first name with this. So this is the difference. First thing. So in case you have a spark function like concatenate over here, never go for a UDF function. Now, why do we, uh, why UDFs are slow, right? Now, remember one thing. Now, spark engine is actually implemented in Java and Scala, these two languages, right? Now, these are the actual languages that run on J JVM. Now, these JVM, this JVM is nothing but it is on the executor side. Right. So Spark is an engine which is actually implemented in Java and Scala. It is very important. That is why I'm repeating it. And these are the two languages that actually run on JVM. So when you try to write a UDF in Python, so for example, if you look over here, the UDF function that I have written, Lambda function, right? It is written in Python. So when you write this in Python, what happens is they are, they cannot be directly executed on the JVM, right? Because these are the Python functions. Right. But they need Python runtime to run the function. So basically, whatever UDF you have written, right, that cannot be directly executed on the Java virtual machine, but that needs a Python runtime associated to it. And interaction should be there between the JVM and the Python runtime. 
to execute your user defined function spark by default does not execute it directly on the java virtual machine right now when you have this interaction what will happen now when you have this interaction there is a serialization and deserialization that happens between your jvm and your python runtime your python runtime is inside the jvm itself but there is a serialization and deserialization because your data first uh, you know goes to your uh, your python runtime you know gets executed and then gets back right so now this involves an extra step because this cannot be done directly at the jvm level it has to have a python runtime right associated to it and even to have that connection between jvm and the python runtime right uh, a, a special library py4j if you know python you would already know it so this is used right this is used to call your code from the jvm so this becomes this back and forth serialization and deserialization between jvm and the python runtime becomes very costly operation that is why your udfs are slow now this is the major region ma ma uh, major reason why your udfs are slow in spark then the second reason to it is your catalyst optimizer right go ahead and watch my spark architecture video if you don't know about it catalyst optimizer right cannot process your udfs so spark basically has a catalyst optimization uh, catalyst optimizer i hope you already know that from my videos when your udf goes to your catalyst optimizer it doesn't know what to do with it because it doesn't understand udf at all right that is one of the reason as well that your spark jobs are not able to optimize the udf part of your code so these are the two reasons why udfs are slow in spark but the same thing when you try to do it with the data frames right when you try to do it with the native uh, your spark functions when you try to use native spark functions like concatenation on the data frame what will happen right it will directly get executed on the jvm and it does not have that extra serialization deserialization back and forth process and that is why the inbuilt functions are fast now even uh, you know just to give you an example over here right if you look over here scala udf and pyspark udf right to so scala user defined function right and the pyspark user defined function now there is a difference right so till now till here i just talked about udfs now i'm going to talk about the difference between all three of them so you have three right you have your spark functions which are native inbuilt functions then you have your pyspark udfs then you have your scala udfs then you have your pandas udf three four right spark functions so these are the native spark built in functions okay so they will directly get executed on the jvm itself so there is no issue right now when you talk about the scala udfs now what what is happening i told you in the beginning itself that the spark frame framework it is itself compatible with scala and the java right so now when you write scala udf it doesn't need python runtime right it doesn't need python runtime there is a compilation still there is still a compi compilation needed for scala udfs as well but at least there is no python runtime serialization or deserialization issue so spark scala udfs are slower than the spark inbuilt function but they are still faster than your pyspark udfs right now when you talk about the pyspark udf the same concept applies right serialization deserialization it has to run on your uh, python runtime right so your pyspark udfs are slower than your spark scala udfs and then the fourth one comes is pyspark pandas udf now pandas udfs at times they are faster than your pyspark udfs at least for the smaller amount of data why because your pyspark panda udf uses apache arrow to transfer the data right it uses apache arrow to transfer the data now this apache arrow is nothing but it is again an in memory columnar data format so i have already made a video on the data file formats please go ahead and watch that particular video so it is an in memory columnar format which transfers the data between jvm and the python process so in the Py pyspark udf what is happening right there is a serialization deserialization happening right but now here 
it is being apache arrow is being used to transfer the data right now when apache arrow is being used what is apache arrow nothing but it is an in memory columnar data format it helps to make that process a little faster so this is how it works now typically scala udf and spice spark udf how it is working on the spark architecture is shown by this diagram so you have a dive driver program over here in python right when you let's say uh, you have your scala udf and then let's say you have a spark session right it gets created when you try to run it now if it is a scala udf what will happen it will directly run on your executor one and your executor do directly right but uh, there will be serialization and deserialization right but it will directly run over here on executor one and executor two PySpark UDF, when you talk about PySpark UDF, what will happen? Your Spark Executor 1 JVM has to talk, has to understand your Python UDF, right? It understands it from the Python runtime. So there's an extra step involved over here, right? So this is all about, you know, your Spark functions, which one you should use, which one is better. All right. I hope you like this particular video. Do remember to like, share and subscribe to my channels. Thank you so much for being till here.